Hello, welcome to Quark Talk. I'm Crystal here. I love talking about the body. You know why? Because there's just so many aspects of it. There are many, many essential aspects of it that we don't really think about how they kind of work together. And when it comes to dance and choreography, how do we use different types of bodies to create a piece that encompasses so much that a choreographer wants to say? Well, today we have a wonderful choreographer and the assistant director to talk about this amazing upcoming production at UH Manoa. So with no further ado, let me introduce the two wonderful guests. I've got to my left, Kale, Kaola Simpson. <laughs> yes, assistant director of yes. Integral Bodies. Assistant uh, director. Assistant director. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and you're also an MFA student. I'm an MFA directing candidate in the theater department at UH Manoa. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, Kaola. Thank you. And uh, Paling Gao, who is the director, choreographer, and associate professor of the UH Dance Department. Well, soon to be, I hope. But well, I'm no. Just congratulations. You are there. I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, congratulations on your upcoming piece. Thank you. Do you want to start by talking up a little bit about what Integral Bodies is all about? Um, yeah, let's first look at the, the words, the definition. Okay. Definition of integral. Integration means the essential and um, the, the essential parts that to make it full, to make it whole. And um, I think to make um, a show like this, we cannot avoid or to single out one one or, or to only address single part of the body type or style. So normally when we are doing a dance production, we select um, dan dancers, highly technical dancers. And then we oftentimes have, have the assumption about what dancers' body look like. But rather in this production, I, um, uh, before the audition, I sort of gave myself a, a, a little goal of um, I would like to include all kinds of bodies, different genders, different sizes, different age, different able, disabled bodies to be included in this production. Why? Yeah, just like I said, without them, it can, without all these people together, it cannot make a whole as an integration of the production. But do you think like, in our contemporary times in the dance world or in just our body conceptions, people are always trying to push the envelope saying that there are different sizes that are all part of the beauty concept, you know, breaking the mold of this perfect body. You know, there's been a strong kind of uh, representation of that or you're going to push this farther or... Yeah, I mean, first, I, I, I would love to ask you, what do you mean by perfect body means? Yeah, well, this is the problem with social media, is yeah. that people, or especially the younger generation, have this concept of it. And then it comes with the aspect of the cultural identity, too, right? You know, we're yeah. talking like, yeah, exactly. what are the norms? What does the Asian eyes look like? Exactly. Or, or the hair? You know, there's so many aspects. And so how do we incorporate all the, the racial elements, the gender elements, and, and still breaking boundaries, but containing something you want to say as a whole? There's so many things to talk about. Especially yeah, when exactly, you consider the yeah. pressure to be yeah. the outside yeah. pressure. Yeah, exactly. There are so many things. <laughs> and I, right now, I still feel like, wow, there are still so many things I can bring into the piece and the process. But the show is coming, so I better wrap it up. <laughs> coming as in this Friday, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the process. Hila, you're assistant director. Can you yes. define that role a little bit and how you collaborate? I guess traditionally, and, and very so in this case, you know, my role is to help execute um, Hailing's vision or your director's vision. Um, there's a lot to do right? Right. in conceptualizing something, and there's a lot of not many hours in a day, so I can weave my way into where what the little detail sections while she holds on to the bigger picture. That's what, you know, traditionally an assistant director, especially where I come from, the Western theater uh, side, it's different in a little case in that most of us that, that pursue this track are, you know, we focus just on what we're used to, the plays that you've probably already heard a thousand times and so forth. So for me to be jumping over to the dance side would be a little bit off that track. So you've never worked with a dance piece in a theatrical kind of setup before? Never. Interesting. Yeah. So can we break that down a little bit? Like, how do you take a piece, you said a little detailed piece of your whole idea, and how do you translate or help you conceptualize that in the form of theater? Yeah, before we go into that, I really want to say that um, the goal of this production is also not separating theater and dance. Ah, okay. So 
As you know, we share Kennedy Theater, and then we are one department. And um, oftentimes, you see, you go to see theater shows. Yes. There are movement involved. True. There are dance element, dance material in it. But it's naturally together. So uh, why not the dance piece have some the theatrical element? Okay. Yeah. So um, I I think we have been. I mean, I know Keola since last fall. Yeah. And then I sort of, I, I've seen his work, and then I feel like maybe I, I, I could um, use or utilize his expertise in theater and maybe can highlight my work. Okay. And especially I'm setting this piece as a dance theater piece. Dance so it's theater. not like a traditional dance shows you are seeing. Is there a script? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It, it, it's become, it becomes a script. Yeah. It yeah. becomes a script. How, what do you mean by that? There is a. I, I met Paling in the fall, and right away I noticed. I was like, I think we think the same. We just it might be in a different language, and I'm not quite sure how she gets to where she's going, um, which you know pulls me over to that side. And the way I think the we may have even had this conversation in passing once is yeah. the way we start something, and a lot of emphasis a lot of times comes on story first. And then how do you execute the story? And I couldn't help but notice Paling is able to um, put the story not necessarily up front and we'll work toward what the story is that we are telling. We'll figure out how we get there and we've gotten to the point now. Now we know what we're trying. Yeah, I think that is um, the method, the, the methodology of chore chore choreography and also device theater. It's okay. like you set a structure and a concept and then you need to be open enough to allow the different things to happen. And then maybe at the end, that, that your, your end product is slightly different than your original setting. And then are you going to allow to it to happen? So by doing so, you are not limiting the element you see during the process. You are allowing more things to happen to enrich your experience. And in the end, the story might come after. Might. Yeah. So is there a danger of it going too off track and not coming back to where your original intent was? I won't say we will go off track because if we want to try something different, it's still under still the structure track. and then the direction. There's, what's the uh, saying I've been clinging on to for the past seven months, which is, uh, you know, hold on tight okay. to an idea, but, <laughs> We're gonna do a sharp but be willing to let go easily. If it, isn't, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't fit, it isn't working, it's okay. You can let that yeah. go, but, uh, you know, be willing to fight for it. So this process is very important. Exactly. It, it's, it's, it's all shaping about the process. And morphing. It's yeah. all about the process. Is that yeah. what device theater is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So going back to my original question of how you kind of conceptualize something that's already shaping and moving at the same time. It's not it's not concrete, you know. How do you how do you work with that? I try to <laughs> try my best to. Um, and I'm the it's it's happening now. There's there's a thought language that's happening where I try to figure out what Paling's intent is. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to be 100% accurate on it, yeah. but try to figure out what her intent is, and then from there move along that line. Uh -huh. And that line often isn't like a perfect roadmap. It is, you know, maybe a, 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 a section here, a section here, a section here, and figuring out ways to connect those dots. That's the only, for me, that's the way I, lo I look at it, is trying to connect her okay. intentional dots. So trying to avoid sounding sexist and kind of binary, are there differences based on your experiences where feeling as a female, the way her mind works kind of is nonlinear, and you have to kind of have that kind of operation to work that way. Because you're in theater, you yeah. said before that it's mostly male dominated and maybe things are more structured. I don't know. This is why I need to ask you. I mean, I, especially in, in, in say educational theater and even in the Western theater, say more toward the West Coast, even as far out as here, is I'm probably seen as a little bit off to the left already as it is. People look at whatever I do and don't know how to describe it and put words on it like avant-garde or experimental, which is fine that they, you know, somebody needs that category to, to, that to understand yeah, something. Right. Um, I mean, I don't set anything set out to make experimental theater. I set out to make theater and tell right. stories. Um, but you mentioned linear, and that's the one thing I noticed about Paling right off the bat is um, it doesn't from what I can tell, my interpretation is she doesn't think in linear ways. <laughs> I would expect that. <laughs> and and, and my, the tendency for me, is because of being surrounded by who I'm surrounded by a lot of times, exactly. is that we have to move in that direction. Um, you know, 
things need to connect in linear ways. Right. And resisting that is exhausting. Um, <laughs> so when I see someone who freeingly does that, it's like, oh, maybe I should go spend more time over there and see what's happening. So I don't know that it actually, the decision making and the thought process relates to sex because I don't actually know if that is. I haven't thought about it that way. Yeah, I, I don't think I would put that. As a female choreographer, I work more, more I, I, wor I work less linear. You work less? Yeah, like I, I have less structure or I'm right, more, right. I, I don't tend to, do, to define my work with language or, was that what you mean? Oh, just yeah. The basis of your kind of concept is: does it is it because of the nature of your um, being a woman that does affect? I don't know. I mean, this is why we're just putting it out there. Like, yeah, maybe, but I haven't think about it. Right. I, I'm just because being you myself. embody it or yourself. You're, you the way you think is already who you are, right? But whether it's because of the nature of the sex is something that's obvious. In, when it comes to the work, I, I, I've never even thought about it. In the way we communicate with, with, with other people, possibly. I haven't, we have different personalities. Yeah, for sure. and then sometimes I feel like I'm very direct. I know this is what I want, and yeah. I would just, just um, be yeah. very, very clear about it. Yeah, and you mentioned before that um, you, know, you don't think about it, but the theater world is so male-centric that... Yeah. We don't. We just assume that the, the, there are equal female parts, and yet the female parts are just kind of supporting yeah. the male. The, it's, the Western theater canon is loaded from uh, too long ago to even all the way up through the you know the nineteen seventies. We'll say even through the eighties, it's it's male dominated parts. Yeah. The, the amount of roles available, um, you know, they're heavily it's, skewed toward me. I have I have a lot of options. Right, um, right. The, the female characters in the Western theater canon are, are, are very limited to supporting your male, your male heroes, right. your male the leader, the male protagonist. Um, there's yeah. not a lot of options. Yeah. And in theater, especially educational theater, is dominated by women. Yes. It's a Education weird competitive... is dominated by women. That's it. Yeah. You don't think about how that kind of uh, affects how we learn things or, or assume certain yeah. positions. Um, can we take a little bit, a few photos from your rehearsal process, yeah. and maybe you can walk us through it? Uh, what are um, yeah? So you can see in this photo there our dance student um, and also a student from non-dance majors. Mm -hmm. and yeah, they are wearing colorful street clothes. They are being them. Are they exploring their own uh, movements? So they are doing this part is a set choreography. Okay, but this choreography was. I mean, from improvisation exploration. Okay. Yeah. Have the next photo. A little another working. Yeah, this is the nice same lines. section. Yeah, so the different body, gender, races. Right. And whether that's part of the story or not, it still kind of affects the the audience perception, right? Was that something? Was that uh, racial element something that you had a conscious effort to incorporate in your piece? Yeah, I, I think so another, yeah, um, I don't think I'm I'm particularly single that out, but the message I really wanna um deliver is to be together. To so be the together. hand holding and we need each other to perceive the movement is important. And this is our dancers holding body parts of other people. Huh. Interesting. So there's a lot of connection, that type of connection. Yeah. So when it comes to that, a lot of it is the exploration of the dancers themselves exploring and then you shaping what you see. Is that right? Is that part of the process? Some of it. But um, there's a one section is entirely my choreography. Okay. So I also, just like I said, there are so many things I, I realize I can explore deeper yes. here. And in dance part, um, we have a fixity of choreography and right. also flexibility in improvisation. So you get to see those in, in one show, in this show. Okay. And yeah, maybe I shouldn't say No, that. Well, what we do is we'll take a quick break, but afterwards we come back. We have a short clip of some part of the dance process you have, uh, and we can go into more specific aspects of the dance that you are exploring as a team, as this integral production, as a you know, wonderfully devised dance theater piece. And it is starting this Friday, so I'll remind you later. But uh, don't go away. We're going to continue talking about integral bodies with Keola and Kaling.
Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Back on Quok Talk, I'm Crystal here with Paling and Keola talking about Integral Bodies, this upcoming dance production at UH Manoa that tries to reduce the misconceptions of disabled and different types of bodies and genders and ethnicity, everything. And we were just saying before the break that there's so many layers to this, we don't even know how to unpack it. But we're doing a good job. So let's continue on. Um, there is a video clip that you wanted to share that's part of the process, but is there anything you wanted to kind of explain before we show that? Yeah, so um, one of the uh, big part of this production is to include people with disabilities and um, it has been a, a, very, a, a very special experience for me. So I, I know this artist, choreographer called Alito Alessi. I met him 10 years ago and I know he has been doing dancing with disabilities for 40 years. So I just reach out to him and then to invite him to work on the two sections of this piece. So um, yeah, I'm really grateful to have a special education center on, of Hawaii to join this production. And we have eight people from that institution and then also two performers uh, with, on wheelchairs to join this production. Um, yeah, maybe you can see them, their presence in the video. Okay, let's take a look before we continue this what this means to be really yeah. oh. That's great. That's really a nice glimpse of just an aspect, just one aspect of your whole piece. Now, with the wheelchair, that must really kind of reshape your process because that's something that's solid, that's fixed, that you have to work around, right? Can you share a little bit of that experience and, and the people who are involved with the dancers and non-dancers in something like that that you're not used to? Maybe people aren't used to working. Mm -hmm. I like the term "get to work" or uh, "get to work with" instead of having to work around. It's a, oh, it's, it's a <laughs> like, and it, it took me a while to even notice it. And there's the sometimes we take ourselves a little too seriously in, in the yeah. stuff we make and the stuff we and, and and being in a room. And I always joke with friends of mine that we don't dance enough, we don't oh, sing enough, we don't yeah. hug yeah. enough. And having this refreshing presence in the room kind of reminded me of that. Oh, like yeah, maybe it's. Time that I don't need to be staring in a mirror, taking myself so seriously all the time when getting ready for a performance. And sometimes a little, little fun happens in this. And it let, it lets some, uh, you know, irregular lines happen. Irregular lines. That's interesting because I was just reading an essay in one of my 
performance studies courses, where the perspective, there is a, an experimental project of the perspective of people in perhaps wheelchairs or in crutches, and how their point of view is different, and how we need to learn to reshift our perspective. Is that something you're working yeah, on? Yeah, just in terms of talking about the element in dance, like the time and the space, actually everybody has a different sense of time. Yeah. Your fast is not my fast. Uh -huh. My slow is not your slow. So how can we include everybody's perspective and really see individuality? So um, we are trying to make these choreography everybody can do. So how do you do that with you know, a given piece of music, for example? And you have like a temple, you have this concept of how it's shaped, and yet people have their own concepts of it. How do, how do you work around that? Yeah, I mean, structure, right? I mean, when we come into the choreography of these sections, we need to have a very strong structure, and then we also need to know in their response to the, oh, the, right. the request. Do they know the numbers? Right. Do they know, can they hold on to the orders? Huh. But actually, luckily, I got all of them. They, they all know. They can they, count they, and be, yeah, can Like, I be. reach out to your hand, yeah. and then they, they know I'm going to shake their hand. So that is a really good sign first. So I know, yes, they know how to respond. So we can keep going on to different, deeper layer of the choreographies. And then I think they are all really good at dancing. When they, when they know the choreography, it's just in their body. They embody those movements. Maybe they, they cannot count or stay with the count, but I think they, that, that kinds of chaos um, happen in the reality too. So um, how do I work around those and include position and chaos in one production? Oh, I like that. So to, to make things to happen. It, it's kind of, this work is kind of like a small world and small society. Like you see how many percentage of disability in the world, like 7% or 15, I don't know. But think about we have 10 people with disabilities and in 47, oh, oh, 30, 47 of the cast members. There are so it's 47 like, people in your cast? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that so must like, be like a yeah. rehearsal nightmare just to <laughs> even coordinate schedules. Oh can we, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because again, we're talking process, right? Because you said in the audition that you casted everybody. I mean, I yeah, want to be a part of it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What? How does that work? That, I mean, <laughs> at first, it's, it feels like a lot of people. Okay. At first. Then it slowly starts to get down to, you start to, you know everybody. Okay. And you recognize everybody. You start to feel when somebody's not there in the room. Um, so that, that big uh -huh. mass slowly starts to become very identifiable and doesn't seem so as chaotic anymore. Okay. Um, you know, if, if somebody's missing, you feel it, you know it. You, we may, you may not be able to identify it right away, yeah. but you know when something's not there. Yeah, and also as a director and choreographer, you really need to have that space of allowing things to happen. Like, okay. you come to the rehearsal, have a plan. But of course, they are plan two and three and four. Okay. Just in case that people you want to see, they, don't, they didn't show up. Ah. So I need to work with that flexibility in my choreography and in the process so I won't feel upset, like, oh, why, why you are not here or not. It's, I think it's also working with the concept of accommodation, like um, to, to respect in, in the visuality. You know students, they have their classes, other classes, and then they need to work, yeah. right? So I need to respect their time, too. But with the compromise of doing what you need to do, though, well, but I cannot see this as a professional product because this is an education setting. We try to provide people opportunity, okay. many people to perform on stage. Not only people that is quote unquote good. Right. Otherwise, you always see the same people dancing and acting at the theater. But it shouldn't be like that. I feel education is to provide students opportunity. When they have opportunity yeah. through the practice, they yes. become better. And Absolutely. then they know how... Does it feel like to become a professional? But for the audience's perspective, do they need to come in knowing that this is kind of an educational experience and that they are integrating aspects that are not what they kind of usually assume to be a dance piece? If that is the case, I hope that the educational part that they uh, assume ends up being for them um, in the end. By, visually, when you, when you start this thing, it'll look chaotic. It'll look like a lot of people. By the end of this thing, I assure you, over the, the amount of time, you start to be able to identify people within this, and it no longer looks like this chaotic um, yeah. scene of 47 people. You actually start seeing people, and you've heard their stories, 
and there are things that we, we, you will find throughout the, the process of the night. There are, there are examples of um, perhaps you and I have had a uh, uh, you know, very unique experience to ourselves, but possibly very easy experience um, you know, physically in and around of a city. We, right. we, oftentimes, we don't even look at how we get in, in and out of a building. It's just very accessible. Right. There are things that you will, you will find in this that hopefully people will find in it, is that there, it's not, it's not, the ease that I have in this world and, and difficulties are, are, are probably unique to me. Yeah. in this and that every single one of these 47 people have different things going right. on in their lives all the way down to the sidewalks outside right. uh, outside of here. that we take for granted yeah there are a couple of photos we maybe we want to bring up just to kind of recap that type of um, concept do you want to talk us through a little bit of this yeah so um, we have a so you can see Isaac on the floor with Maria uh -huh. Isaac is actually need a wheelchair to, oh. to live in his daily life but he is so excited to get off the That's chair great. and then to dance on wow. the floor. And Maria's kind of like mimicking. Okay. Yeah. So we make the wheelchair as a part a of prop, the choreography. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I love that. So there's a lot that goes around that kind of right. the prop. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, is it yeah. a prop? I mean, to have fun it, with a wheelchair. To have fun with a wheelchair. I love that. And this person on top, is she's. Older, you were talking about different ages, you know. It, it's she really is a beautiful dancer, yeah. beautiful mover. I love it. And there's different levels you play with, and different concepts of the body, like you mentioned before. Wow. Okay. So, what is your takeaway from this? I mean, with our limited time left, I'd like to hear what your takeaway and what pe you want people to take away from this. What have you learned through this process? In a very short time. Sorry, we only. Have I, I, I have I have learned that I if I think outside I think I think outside the box. Yeah. I had there is another layer of boxes oh. to go when it comes to thinking, and it yeah. has more to do with than me just seeing things within a theatrical space. There's yes. a, a theater outside that we all live in, and probably should start and need to start seeing. Things. I hear you. Okay. Really? I hope I really hope people to see come to see the show at least twice because there oh. are things that you might not notice or or invisible. Oh. For your first time to It's like a it. poem. You read it. You have to read it again to take in certain yeah. aspects of it. Not, under, not necessary to understand it, but to get a sensation or um, to feel about it. So remind us again when this show is. Yeah, we premiered this Friday um, and Saturday at 7, 7.30 at uh, Kennedy Theater. And okay. also the week after from um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday we have Monday at 2 p.m. And how can people buy tickets? Uh, there's uh, information online. You can go to the K Kennedy Theater live yeah. sta live on stage dot com. Live on stage. Live on stage dot com. Okay, so remember that a really, really beautifully um, complicated, complex, integral piece that encompasses what we were talking about. Just a little bit of it. The positions, the chaos, the different bodies. I thank you both for your wonderful insights, your process for sharing, and good luck. Break a leg. <laughs> no, but it, this is horrible. But the beauty of this piece is for us to enjoy. So don't miss this chance, starting this Friday again. So thank you so much for both thank of you. you. Thank for you for us. having us. All right, us. don't miss it, Integral Bodies.